Number 10. Machine Graveyards Decommissioned war machines have ended up in vehicle graveyards in practically every corner of the globe, including even the most remote of places. When a war ends, a lot of the equipment is no longer needed, so it's often taken out of service, parked in a lot or a field somewhere, and simply left to rot. Photographer and history enthusiast Dimitri Osadshi spent five amazing years traveling to these sites in more than 50 countries as part of his quest to capture images of the historic military vehicles before they rust away and disappear or are finally cleaned up. He's photographed old machines in nearly every imaginable type of environment, including the desert in the United Arab Emirates, where he took snapshots of decaying planes, as well as the Russian Arctic, where he snapped pictures of old ships that remained trapped in ice. Osadshi has captured photos of the 301-foot-long Lund-class Erkana plan. Nicknamed the Caspian Sea Monster, the Soviet aircraft was built in 1975. Unlike conventional planes, it was designed to fly just over the water at extremely low altitudes. The Erkano plan has been sitting on the beach in Durban, Russia since 2020. The 38-year-old photographer also snapped haunting images of an entire tank graveyard that's being reclaimed by nature, as well as some old Soviet locomotives in Leningrad Oblast and an abandoned torpedo launcher in Kronstadt. Osadshi's photos feature machines that look like they're ready and waiting to go into battle on a moment's notice, despite obvious signs of wear and tear from decades of neglect. Even though they'll probably never be used again, many of the boats, planes, tanks, and other vehicles are kept in closely guarded places that are closed to the public. Number 9. It Gets Destroyed The controversial decision to withdraw American troops from Afghanistan last year left the military with the question of what to do with all the equipment it would no longer need. It was speculated that tens of millions of dollars worth of vehicles were left behind. Initially, some claimed that the equipment would be of no use to the Taliban due to a lack of experienced operators. But this belief was quickly proven wrong as the Taliban seized as many as 2,000 armored vehicles and 100 aircraft, including U.S.-made UH-60 Black Hawk helicopters and Russian Mi-17s. News headlines reported that the militant group had taken control of an estimated $21 billion worth of abandoned machines. In a press briefing, General Kenneth Frank McKenzie of the U.S. Central Command reported that nearly 170 pieces of equipment left in Kabul had been demilitarized or rendered useless. He explained that as American forces were on their way out of the country, they destroyed up to 70 mine-resistant ambush-protected or MRAP vehicles, 23 Humvees, and 73 aircraft. Months earlier, after giving word of the impending withdrawal from Afghanistan, at least 1,300 pieces of equipment had been destroyed. But it's clear, based on the Taliban's ability to commandeer some vehicles, that not everything the Americans left behind was inoperable. It also implied that the Taliban had absorbed some former members of the Afghan army who had been formally taught how to operate the machines. Writing for Forbes, defense expert Vikram Mittal explained that the U.S. did not gift Afghanistan with top-of-the-line equipment and that the Taliban probably lacks the resources to maintain anything it's made use of so far. In other words, it's likely only a matter of time before the vehicles are once again left to decay. Number 8. It Gets Scrapped If things had gone according to plan, the U.S. would have completely withdrawn from Afghanistan by the end of 2014. As you probably know, this didn't happen. But the military prepared for it throughout 2013 by scrapping more than 170 million pounds of equipment as part of a bigger plan to get rid of $7 billion worth of equipment. The decision to destroy the vehicles came after it was decided that the military had no practical use for them and it would be unjustifiably expensive to ship them back to the U.S. Instead, it was to be shredded, crushed, or sold as scrap. The equipment that was slated for destruction accounted for roughly 20% of what the Army brought into Afghanistan. Many of the items that got scrapped were mine-resistant, ambush-protected vehicles, or MRAPs. Out of the 11,000 that were in Afghanistan at the time, around 2,000 were classified as excess. And at a price tag of around $1 million each, that adds up to a pretty penny in losses. And like previous instances of military surplus being discarded, some people wondered if the materials could have been put to better use or perhaps even donated to the Afghan military. U.S. officials claimed that the rules surrounding giving equipment away are complicated and that Afghanistan's landlocked geography made it difficult to remove MRAPs from the country. But some vehicles were given away to other countries, including around 9,000 MRAPs, but a troubling number of them still got thrown away. Number 7. Million Dollar Point 
During World War II, the U.S. military launched attacks against the Japanese from the island of Espiritu Santo, which belongs to the Republic of Vanuatu. American forces dumped dozens of vehicles, including bulldozers, tractors, forklifts, jeeps, and trucks into the waters off the island, along with a sizable amount of trash. After a failed attempt to negotiate a deal with locals to buy the equipment, it was deemed cheaper to throw it away than to transport it back to the U.S. The underwater mess has become a popular dive site, but some people have misgivings about the decision to toss perfectly good vehicles into the ocean when they could have been donated to the local people and put to good civilian use. There could be more to the story. The U.S. may have dumped the equipment because the huge influx of lower-cost vehicles into the market would have adversely affected the American economy, according to Cabinet Magazine writer Thurston Clark. He described how locals watched as Navy Seabees drove the vehicles off the end of a purpose-built ramp. Military records from the time failed to convey the magnitude of the dumping, claiming that the site consists of a modest amount of ammunition and nothing else. This implies that the Americans perhaps knew that their decision to ditch the equipment was controversial, to say the least. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for checking us out. If you're liking this video, be sure to hit the subscribe buttons. All right, let's get back to it. Number 6. Cold War Submarine Graveyard Russia's Kola Peninsula is home to a Soviet-era submarine graveyard that was largely forgotten until recent years. The vehicles sit in a restricted zone near the Finnish border at a site that's connected to an active naval base. They were dumped and forgotten about during the 1970s, when Soviet shipyards were struggling to keep up with orders for new warships. Simply put, disposing of the submarines properly wasn't a priority. Rumor has it that some of the decommissioned subs were used for target practice and sunk, while others were simply left to decay. But there's a reason why it's a bad idea to dump a submarine or boat into water and leave its fate to nature. Over the years, oil and rust polluted the water, and the authorities finally realized that they needed to clean it up before it got even worse. At least one submarine was burned, others were dismantled, removed from the water, and recycled. Some were in good enough shape to be used as training vessels, and one ended up on display at a museum. Based on satellite images captured in 2007, it looked as though there were still seven subs sitting in the water and were visibly beyond salvaging. Number 5. Abandoned Equipment in Vietnam in 1975, the last remaining U.S. forces in Vietnam hastily left the country, leaving behind an estimated $1 billion worth of weapons and other equipment amid the chaos. Adjusted for inflation, that's more than $5.2 billion today. Hundreds of trucks, planes, tanks, armored personnel carriers, and artillery pieces were left behind, along with large amounts of guns and ammunition. Inside sources told the New York Times that no efforts were made to save any of the equipment. By the time word of the abandonment reached news headlines, it was too late to accurately calculate the true extent of the losses. One local described seeing troops basically dropping their weapons and fleeing the city of Pleiku, leaving behind dozens of planes and helicopters, several artillery pieces, signal equipment, and thousands of tons of bombs and ammunition. All this equipment reportedly fell into the hands of the North Vietnamese, along with several dozen tanks that were abandoned in the Phu Bon province capital of Hao Bon. The government's decision to abruptly retreat as the North Vietnamese advanced left a panicked mess throughout the southern part of the country. Within weeks, Saigon fell to the encroaching communist forces. Number 4. Repurposed Surplus As you'll learn throughout today's video, lots of perfectly good military equipment was abandoned or tossed into the ocean when it was no longer needed. But it hasn't all gone to waste. Some of it gets repurposed through the Defense Logistics Agency's Disposition Services, which finds new life for billions of dollars worth of outdated but functional equipment every year. In 2011, journalist Michelle Kennedy spoke with Rob DeLong, a disposal service representative who was working at one of the agency's offices near Fort Drum in upstate New York. His office only takes big-ticket items, mostly vehicles. But the DLA Disposition Services takes all kinds of government surplus at its various locations, including clothing, air conditioners, computers, and more. The items are cataloged into the agency's inventory, which gives federal agencies first dibs when it comes to submitting requests. Equipment is also sometimes donated to state and local governments and other qualified organizations, including law enforcement and fire departments. The receiving agency must agree to keep the piece of equipment for at least 18 months before reselling it. Items that are not reutilized within the government are sometimes sold to the public after being deemed safe and appropriate for civilian use. Disposition Services also facilitates the proper disposal of hazardous materials and has a recycling program, reducing the environmental risks and costs that the obsolete property comes with. Number 3. Seized Civil War Weapons 
In early 1865, 60,000 Union soldiers sacked the city of Columbia, South Carolina under the leadership of William Tecumseh Sherman. The attack was meant to punish the Confederate Army for seceding from the Union. Sherman's forces torched the city and dumped all the weapons they had seized into the Congaree River. Over the years, the munitions became covered in a two-foot-thick layer of tar that ran into the river as a byproduct from a nearby plant that closed in 1954. Sonar scans revealed that there could be as many as 1.2 million cannonballs and 4,000 bayonet scabbards buried on the riverbed. Accessing the weapons was improbable until 2015, when the energy company Scanacorp announced plans to lead an $18.5 million project to remove the tar. It has taken several years to negotiate the deals, but it looks as though the project may finally start soon. A safety plan is still being worked out, and the removal will take at least three years to complete. Archaeologists will sort through the tar in search of any historically valuable artifacts that can teach them more about the Civil War and what went on during the sacking of Colombia. Number 2. Saipan Located in the western Pacific roughly 5,900 miles from the American mainland, Saipan is a commonwealth of the United States and the largest of the Mariana Islands. It's also the site of a brutal weeks-long battle between U.S. and Japanese forces that lasted from June 15 to July 9, 1944. Known as the Battle of Saipan, the skirmish ended with an American victory and the island's capture from the Japanese. There are numerous American and Japanese historical sites on Saipan. Several Sherman M4 tanks can be found off the shore of Chalankanoa Beach, sitting in about 10 feet of water. They're remarkably intact for their age and are a popular diving attraction among tourists. The island and its surrounding waters are also home to two sunken Japanese planes, two American planes, a handful of merchant ships, some landing vehicles, and other machinery. Divers can explore the submerged vehicles, including the Japanese naval ship Shoan Maru, which sits roughly 30 feet beneath the waves. Most of the attractions are available to entry-level divers. For more experienced visitors, there's an underwater pile of World War II-era junk filled with jeeps, airplane parts, and other items that the U.S. Navy discarded during its time in Saipan. Number 1. RAF Folkingham The British Royal Air Force Folkingham base was opened in Lincolnshire, England in 1940. It served primarily as a troop carrier airfield and was used by both British and American forces. During the Cold War, the property functioned as a missile base. When RAF Folkingham closed down in 1963, hundreds of vehicles that had seen use during wartime were simply left at the site, including trucks, boats, amphibious vehicles, and construction and farming machines. Over time, the rotting equipment became overgrown and covered in rust and peeling paint. Shortly after the base shut down, the land was sold to a private buyer for agricultural use, but the vehicles were left untouched as they fell further into disrepair. In 2013, Mail Online reported that the current owners stored the machines for the sale of scrap parts. Today, the field remains littered with the decaying equipment. Thanks for watching. Were you surprised to learn what happens to military equipment after a war? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.